Hello, everyone. This is Paul Bertarelli reporting from Adoshina, Slovenia, and this is the new Pipistrel Pantera, which is undergoing certification testing here in Adoshina. As you may have read, the airplane has gotten a new engine. It's the uh, IO540 to replace the IO390, which was originally planned for the aircraft. And we'll talk to Tina Tomczak first about the status of the certification project. Then we'll take a brief demonstration flight with Pipistrel's Robert Likar. Pantera now has about 110 hours of flight test uh, on it. We are now in the middle of the spin testing campaign. About 60 cases were performed, about 60 cases remain. Um, otherwise, we've covered every aspect of stability, controllability, uh, slipping, skidding, forward CG, aft CG, uh, takeoff performance test, plan performance test. So uh, literally, it's just the second portion of the spin testing and the high-speed envelope exploration that remains. Uh, we have now hit a 210 knots indicated. Uh, we need to go up to 245, which is the VD. We have heard a lot um, about the aircraft's performance expectations versus reality. Uh, we have tested five different propeller combinations and different air, uh, airframe configurations. Uh, no antennas, let's say antennas mounted, footsteps retracted, footsteps extended. Uh, the aeroplane, the maximum speed we have hit was 196 knots true in cruise configuration, which is six knots slower than what was calculated. It represents less than 3% of the performance, I'd say, off the expectation mark. We are, however, uh, doing rather well on the lower speed envelope. In fact, the projected stall speed is five knots slower than what was calculated, and this allows us for a payload increase. Um, that will make a lot of owners happy, more so than the six knots of speed that we are lacking. Uh, we have selected the 260 horsepower variant of the IO540. It's a fuel-injected straight valve engine. And what is peculiar about this engine choice is that we are in fact not aiming at a dramatic performance increase. We do not feel that the aeroplane needs more horsepower. Rather, um, the six-cylinder engine will add a lot of flexibility to the operations. So the particular 540, 260 horsepower variant, uh, has the most different fuel types approved for any aviation engine. This is what was our promise and uh, the aeroplane will be easily able to operate on, on MOGAS conditions. Since there will be more than 220 horsepower always available on the prop, essentially providing for turbocharged levels of performance if we kept the, the four-cylinder engine up. But the complexity is not there. Uh, the high maintenance cost of a turbocharged engine is not there and the fact that the engine uses uh, straight valves versus the angular um, means that the running cost maintenance is marginally higher with the 540 versus the 390. The Pantera is by no means a big airplane. Despite the foreshortening lens here, the wingspan is 33 feet or 11 meters, but at 49 inches or 124 centimeters, the cabin is quite wide at the shoulders. Access to the rear seat is through a large hatch, and there's plenty of leg and shoulder room back there, too. Ingress into the front seats requires a head duck, or, oops, you won't do that a second time. We flew an IO390 equipped Pantera since the IO540 hadn't been installed yet. The test article is equipped with a Dynon Skyview and a Garmin GTN 650-750 combination, but Pipistrel hasn't decided on final avionics yet there's almost certain to be other options. Behind Pipistrel's factory is a well-manicured 1,000-meter turf runway, and that damp grass takes a toll on takeoff performance. I wouldn't call it sluggish exactly, but it's not strong either. The IO540's additional 50 horsepower will help that. Once the gear is folded, the Pantera accelerates and easily climbs at 1,200 feet per minute at a mid-weight. As you can see, cockpit visibility forward is a little restricted by the center post that forms the cabin's crashworthy structure, but it's not much of a hindrance. The view out the sides is excellent. Uh, Robert, we've just taken off from the uh, grass airfield at, at Doshina. Uh, yes. Tell me a little bit about how you do takeoffs in this airplane. Uh, we used uh, a little bit of flap. Uh, yes, so for the normal taking off, uh, we use flap slot, 15 degrees and we use normal full forward the propeller and mixture also just expecting uh, rotating at uh, 63 knots 
uh, so it depends on the weight uh, of the aircraft but uh, it takes near 50, 500 feet to 600 feet as you saw uh, when we're climbing and try to maintain uh, the climb airspeed 80 the angle is quite uh, steep and so uh, the performance uh, has been performed uh, quite good for the for the this uh, type of aircraft. Now on this flight we've uh, been up to about 5,000 feet. Uh, we saw a cruise airspeed, true airspeed of about 180 knots or so. Yes, and then we do the lean, uh, the engine lean, and uh, we uh, with consumption uh, about uh, 55 liters per hour, we do uh, achieve exactly what the paper says. So that was. Uh, 40 liters and uh, when the airspeed was constant it was 38 liters per per hour consumption. And, uh, at, at 38 liters which is right uh, a little under 10 or right around 10 gallons. Yes it is a little less than 10 uh, gallons per hour. Uh, we were seeing about 170 to 173 uh, knots. You were, you, were, you were correct at, at, at uh, this airspeed we have uh, we have exactly 10 gallons per, per, per hour consumption. You'd think that landing something as slick looking as a Pantera would be demanding, but it actually lands like a Cherokee thanks to a docile low speed envelope. We used 75 knots indicated over the fence and it felt like it could safely be a lot slower than that. It's too soon to draw serious conclusions about the Pantera. We'll need to see how it performs with the IO540 to see what it's really capable of. For now, it's a moderately fast cruiser with the best fuel economy of any four place gasoline airplane we've flown. That's no small achievement for a company new to certified aircraft. For a full report on the Pantera, including Pipistrel's plans for a hybrid and an electric model, see the July 2014 issue of Aviation Consumer Magazine. For AvWeb, I'm Paul Bertarelli reporting. Thanks for watching.